Peter, the general manager of your organization, sends you an email. He's going into a meeting in five minutes and he needs the sales for these customers. But what you have as far as data is concerned is a long list of customers, sales, quantity and profit. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use XLOOKUP in a way that it increases your speed of work exponentially. Let's get back to Peter's question because he's going into a meeting in five minutes. You can use XLOOKUP, which is the advanced version of VLOOKUP and replaces both VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP and can also perform some advanced functions. Currently, it's only available in Office 365. Here you can see the XLOOKUP function arguments, but let's start with this example. So in order to find the sales dollars for these customers from this large data set, you are going to start entering the X lookup arguments. So equal sign X lookup brackets open. So the first argument is lookup value and we are looking for this customer, Amy Hunt, and we'll put a comma. You look at the lookup array, which will be the customer name array. You click on the first cell and then press control and shift and down arrow to select all of the data set. And then you press comma again. And if you go back up, we know the sales are in this column C. So we will do the same. We'll select the first cell and we will press control shift and down arrow. Make sure that the range for both lookup array and return array are the same. So you cannot have a longer array for the return array. It has to match the size. Here you go. And then if you close the brackets, you have the results. So the sales for Amy are $577.49. Now you can simply copy the formula down and it provides you the sales for all of these customers. So you can send this information as it is now, but you know from experience that Peter usually asks for more information after he has been uh, provided the original information. So you're thinking, why don't I provide the quantity sold in profit dollars as well? Now using XLOOKUP, you can do this very easily. It's different from VLOOKUP. What you have to do is simply change the range of your return array, right? So what we will do here, we open the formula again. So I press F2 and instead of selecting column C only, I'm just going to change this from C to E, right? So now you see that the return value will be from C, column C to E. And as soon as, as, soon as you press enter, Something amazing happens. Excel automatically understands that you need information for quantity and profit, and it puts this information next in, in the next two columns, right? So what you can do to make it look nice is copy the titles, the column headers, and you copy the formula here down to the remaining customers, and you have all the information you needed here, okay? So you copy the table into an email and send the email back to Peter and he gets the information right in time for the meeting. But as usual, during the meeting, he realizes that he also needs the customer ID information. So he sends you another quick text message and asks you for adding the customer ID information. Now, if you are used to using VLOOKUP, you know that there was a limitation in VLOOKUP that you could only go from left to right. You could not look up information from right to left. Well, XLOOKUP does not have that limitation anymore. So you can quickly add customer ID here using the XLOOKUP function as well. So let's do that. Let's bring the title here for customer ID and use our XLOOKUP function in a very similar fashion. So again, we are looking for the customer name. So XLOOKUP H4, use a comma, and then your lookup array or the column from where you're going to look up. And as you close the brackets or parentheses, you see that you get a customer ID. So a great improvement in VLOOKUP and saves you a lot of time. So you send this information back in a fraction of a second and Peter must be amazed at how quickly you can respond to his emails. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And once subscribed, make sure you click on the bell notification so that you get updated every time I post a new video. So you are feeling accomplished. You had a good start of the day. And as you're thinking about it, your manager walks in and asks you about that sales commission file. 
she asks you to create this sales commission file where you have to calculate the sales commission for each of the sales representatives and the table she provided you for commission is this where for any sales up to ten thousand dollars the sales commission is one percent of the sales amount similarly for sales from ten to twenty five thousand the sales commission is uh, two percent the total sales amount all the way up to two hundred fifty thousand so if a sales rep sold for two hundred fifty thousand or more the commission percentage would be five percent to calculate this in xlookup what you need to use is something called match mode the argument called match mode and how you use it is you will use your xlookup formula so let's use it xlookup parentheses open your lookup value is sales for that particular sales representative comma lookup array is these buckets of sales and here you would want to press F4 to freeze or lock the cell range. Then you press comma again and you select the commission percentage columns and again freeze the cells. Now if you close the parentheses and press enter here you see an NA error and this is because by default XLOOKUP uses an exact match type which is that XLOOKUP would try to look at exactly the value of $185,854 in this table and since it does not find it, it will give you an error message. To fix that, you go back to your formula, so I press F2 and we need to add one more argument. So right now we have entered the lookup value, the lookup array and return array. If not found, we will deal with this later. This is optional. In fact, these three arguments are optional in XLOOKUP. So we will ignore if not found, but what we are going to focus on is match mode. So to do that, we press a comma and then we press a comma again to ignore the if not found argument. And now we are in the match mode argument. So in this case, as we said that any sales from uh, $1 up to $10,000 would have a sales commission of 1%. So we would, the argument that we will use would be 1% which will present exact match or next larger item. So let's do that. And if I press enter now, you see that Excel returns 5% as commission and $185,854 are between $100,000 and $250,000. So which is falling in the bucket of 5%. And if I just double click this small square here, it will copy the formula all the way down to all the sales reps. Now what you will notice here is that in this case you have $254,947 of uh, sales and you again have an NA error because you do not have a value above $250,000. So a simple fix for that would be if the annual sales value is more than $250,000 the percentage would be 5%. So let's add that. I go back into the formula, click on if, brackets open, parentheses open annual sales value is greater than 250,000 comma then you put 5% that is the value if true and if value is false you still have the original formula in place and then you close the parentheses and press enter and as you can see now it automatically calculated 5% but what I want to show you let's undo this change what I want to show you is that if the policy was that the sales rep only get 1% when they hit $10,000 and not any amount under 10,000 and the same applies for 2% that if the sales rep hit 25,000 only then they get to 2% otherwise they will get 1% you could do that too by using the same argument for match mode so instead of using one now for match mode you use minus one and minus one represents exact match or next smaller item. So as soon as I do that, you see that this percentage changes from 5% to 4%. So now because 185,000 in this policy does not even does not hit the 250K required for 5%, the commission percent is 
and you double checked with your manager and she actually confirmed that this is the policy so your job is not just to calculate but to look at the numbers think about the numbers and then you confirm that the policy actually was that in order to get one percent you had to actually hit ten thousand first okay so you change the formula and then you again copy all the way down and now you face another problem and that is that there are a few sales reps who have made sales of less than 10,000. And according to this policy, there's no commission for any sales less than 10,000. This is where we can, we could also use the if function again, but here we can use a functionality that is now already available in XLOOKUP. And that is if not found. You see here, this if not found function. So how I'm going, how I'm going to fix that is, I go back to my formula and we know that this if not found if not found function is the fourth argument so we have one two three and the fourth one here last time we left it blank we didn't put anything else anything here but you could actually enter zero here and as soon as you press enter you see that the percentage becomes zero percent so if i again copy this formula all across All of your errors are gone now and wherever the sales are less than 10,000 now your calculation is 0% so now very simply you can complete the file by multiplying the annual sales with the sales commission percentage that you have calculated and and send the file back to your manager and you can see the 0% commission uh, calculated for sales below 10,000 now it's time for a coffee break so you go to the cafeteria and as you're having your coffee the purchasing manager walks in and he asks you for a favor he has a file with a list of materials and the date they were purchased and the price they were purchased but the purchasing manager wants to only see the most recent purchase price so for example if you look at this material these are all the purchase transactions against this material and as you can see the material was purchased on multiple dates starting 7th of January 2018 and the most recent purchase was done on the 7th of January 2020. So you can see the price did vary a little bit during the, during the year. So what the purchasing manager is asking you for is the most recent price. Now, if you're used to using VLOOKUP, you know that VLOOKUP would bring the first value in the data. Uh, but, in, but using XLOOKUP, you can also reverse the order and you can bring up the price that is the most recent. So how do you do that? Let's take a look. First, we will use XLOOKUP without entering the search mode argument. And this will bring the most, uh, this will bring the oldest price. So let's do that quickly equal to x lookup and as we close the brackets without entering any other arguments you will get what what you would usually get using a v lookup right the first purchase on the list however the purchasing manager wants the most recent price so what you can do here is add another argument in the x lookup formula so if i said simply copy this formula over here So far, there's no change in the formula, but what I would do is add the last argument. And in order to get to that argument, I will put a few commas because um, the first comma you put after you look up array would be your if not found argument, but you can leave it empty. Just put another comma and it asks for the match mode. Again, by default, it is the exact match mode and this is what we need. So you press another comma and now you get to your search mode. And here you can see you have an option of search first to last, which is by default. If you don't enter anything, it, it, uh, the value is one, but you can also change it to minus one. So it's kind of easy to remember. If you want to reverse the order, just put a negative one, a minus one in the argument. And then if you press enter, you see here, it brings you the value of 2690, which is the last purchase price for this material, right? So you can put, you can title this as last price. This one is first price and you can copy this down 
and really doesn't matter how many materials you have once you have the formula you can provide this information very easily so you complete this list and you send it back to your purchasing manager and the purchasing manager as usual is extremely happy with you guys are you finding this information valuable if you are please let me know by leaving a comment if you haven't hit thumbs up so far please go ahead and hit like and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet make sure you click subscribe so now you receive a request from your auditors who have selected a sample of five customers and they want annual sales for these five customers but for some reason the customers are laid out in the rows instead of the columns now remember in your file the customers are in the columns and then sales are also in the column so there is a change in layout that you have to do but with the help of xlookup you can do that very easily because the functional arguments do not change you can still use xlookup to provide that information and you are feeling good today you had a very productive day and you want to help out the auditors so instead of asking them to resend the file you say okay i'm going to help them i am going to use my newly learned xlookup skills and provide this information so how do you do that it's very simple now we are dealing between two files so here is your auditor file you will use xlookup look up the customer name comma go back to your file you select the column or range where you have the customer names and you can see now excel because it's working with two separate files excel is automatically freezing the cell references which it does by default and simply you will also bring in the sales from the sales column okay and you close the parentheses and you press enter and here you go now the good thing is previously in vlookup you had to copy the cells down and if you copied across it wouldn't work but in the case of xlookup that doesn't matter all you have to do is copy across and there you go your auditor sample request is complete and you can send that back to the auditors as well so these are some of the basic ways you can use X xlookup to speed up your work there are a few problems however that i noted with xlookup and uh, you should be careful about them one of them as i mentioned earlier is that your um, ranges your ranges should match so let's go back to our original example where we were providing uh, some sales information to peter and you can see our range starts from the same uh, from from the same row and finishes at the same row but if by mistake you started at the wrong cell but your total size of the range was still the same xlookup would not identify that as an error so if i press enter you see now that xlookup is bringing wrong information so if you scroll all the way down you will see that the range size is the same but it's actually misplaced so this is one issue that um, with xlookup you have to be very careful so one way i used to avoid this and i used to do that with vlookup as well is instead of selecting the range i select columns and that is a lazy way of doing it but it's actually very efficient the only thing you have to take care of is that um, there's nothing below your below the end of your data set that may screw up the numbers but what i'm talking about here is is rewriting the formula in a way that instead of selecting the ranges you select the columns so for the column b instead of selecting b3 to base b693 i'm just going to select the range the column b and similarly for this range i'm just going to select the column c to e and as i do that you see it changes these are only some basic uses of uh, xlookup if you would like to learn advanced uses of xlookup make sure you leave a comment and if you have ideas of your own if you have suggestions do not hesitate to share them in the comment section as well let's all learn from each other and till the next video have a good one and bye for now